Christian Anarchist here. In my last video, I mentioned the negativity of this phobia I've been seeing lately of Calvinism that usually resorts to painting Calvinists in a bad light simply because of things that they don't like about certain doctrines. Particularly, they do not like the idea of the Reformed view of the doctrine of election as it pertains to God choosing who is saved and who is not saved. They usually ask me, how could I believe in such a concept? It sounds way too dark. Well, here is how I view it from a biblical standpoint and a philosophical one. Alrighty then. First off, it needs to be established that there are things which we do not know concerning God, especially the mysterious things of God, as stated in Deuteronomy 29, verse 29. Now, knowing that, let's try to understand something. You have no knowledge of who is elect or who is not elect. So, do you separate yourself from people who are not elect if you are elect? This question should be considered fallacious, though. What's wrong with you people? Since you do not know who the elect are individually, so how could you separate yourself in the first point since you don't even know who they were? Now, you do know this, though, that you know that these people will be of the church. They will be Christians. Those who believe will not perish in the end, but they will have everlasting life. That is essentially what a Christian will definitely be. It's not the idea of this they still maintain and identify, but still, if, even if you have someone in the church, it doesn't mean that they'll stay in there the whole time. We do not know if the person in the end will stay in the faith or not. So we must live our lives regularly and not in a paranoid sense of you're one of them type of mentalities. Another thing that I would also like to point out in being the common objection to Calvinism is, their pre is the preaching. If an elect has been set forward, why preach? Simple. He had, God has ordained the means by which the elect would respond to the glory of our Lord's gospel. When it is preached by somebody, it is a calling that only the elect can answer and not the natural man. Think of it like a sleeper agent. They are going about their day until they hear of this message that awakens who they are and they begin to act on the state of being who they were called to be. So our job is preaching to the crowd of people so that one of those elect is among the crowd and that the Holy Spirit moves within them and they receive faith by hearing of the word, as mentioned in Romans chapter 10 verse 17. So with this, we can have a stronger motivation for preaching the gospel and not be paranoid and or lazy. This has been the Christian Anarchist. Have a great day.